This is GTV. When I played the new Metroid game, Samus Returns, it really took me back to the old days. Wait, didn't Samus already return? Shouldn't this game be called Samus Returns Again? Or Samus Re-Returns? Yeah, I know it's a remake. I guess it's too late to change it. The first Metroid is what I want to focus on here anyway. But I will come back to Samus Returns by the end of this video to bring things full circle from the first Metroid to the newest entry, so stick around. The first Metroid came out alongside The Legend of Zelda and Kid Icarus. All three games were brutal without any kind of guidebook, maps, or really any understanding of what to do. But in 1987, that's just the way it was. Here you go, Junior. Three super insanely hard games with no help. Enjoy! All three games in Japan had save features, but only Zelda came to the West with this intact. Metroid and Kid Icarus came with a password function. Okay kids, and I really do mean kids because if you were born in an era of hard drives and cloud syncing, it might be hard to wrap your head around that games on carts used to use batteries to save the game. Yes, actual batteries! They were expensive and so to cut costs, some carts used a password system. Other examples include the Battle of Olympus and Dragon Quest 1 in Japan. The thing about the password system that was fun and cool was that you could manipulate it in a way. And some games had secret passwords to put in the game, which if you found them, was a neat little bonus. For example, if you start Metroid and die, the password looks like this. Mostly zeros, and I guess the only data here is showing how much time you spent playing, as the internal clock of the game affects the ending. But if I get the Maru item, and can make Metroid crawl, and then die, it changes. Well, it didn't take long for those of us in 1987 to realize that you could play around with the password system and give yourself extra energy, new power-ups, open up new areas, or whatever else you could find. A lot of it was trial and error. And that was part of the fun. When Metroid, Zelda, and Kid Icarus were new, Nintendo started printing the Nintendo Fun Club News, which later became Nintendo Power. The scant few hints that we were dropped every two months was like an oasis in the desert. But eventually, in both Nintendo Power Issue 29 and Top Secret Passwords, Nintendo told us of an ultimate code. And to everyone's surprise, it was easy to remember. Just put in Justin Bailey, and go right to the end with a full arsenal and the best ending. Wait, Metroid was a girl? Yeah, this was for many the way we learned that Samus Aran was female. Everyone thought that was cool back then, and the proper way to see Samus' face is to beat the game in under two hours. But that was never gonna happen. So the password was the way to go. I used to think Samus was a man though, as the US ending in the name of Samus follows the Latin rules of second declension for masculine nouns. But we're getting way off track here. Justin Bailey? Who was that? Why was a common name used as the ultimate password in Metroid? Again, if you were born after the internet, there used to be these things called urban legends. Without the real-life, all-knowing trash heap called Google, you had all kinds of crazy stories floating around out there, and no way to disprove them. And usually no way to prove them either. One rumor was simply that Justin Bailey was a programmer who put his name in the game. That has been done before, like the famous Warren Robinette Easter egg in Atari's Adventure. But Metroid was made in Japan, and had an American worked on it, he would have been credited. I guess you could check company payrolls and phone books in Redmond, Washington from 1987 to see if Justin Bailey was real. If you do, let me know what you find. The other rumor, one that still hangs in the air around those who aren't in the know, is that Justin Bailey is not a name, but a phrase. Of course, in the game, Samus wears a suit of armor, but with the Justin Bailey code, she wears what looks like a bathing suit. The rumor of the day was that Bailey was a slang word used in the 1940s in the UK for a bathing suit. 
Some variants say Australia. And so Samus was just in a bailey, as in she was just in a bathing suit. I've never seen a bathing suit with long sleeves, but hey, it was the 40s. This has all the markings of an urban legend. It's a word from another country, from another time period, and it's slang that's fallen into disuse. You would need a slang dictionary of British English from the 1940s and hope that the writers decided to put it in there. You'd have better luck finding Miyamoto's legendary dictionary that has donkey as the word for stupid. There is no evidence that Bailey ever meant a word for bathing suit in the UK or Australia or anywhere else in the 1940s or any time. But the Oxford Dictionary says Bailey means the outer wall of a castle and its root comes from a French word for enclosure. Hmm. There are a lot of walls in Metroid and the goal is to escape. Maybe after all, all of us really were just in a Bailey. Eventually though, the truth did come out. It was actually more unbelievable than all gaming rumors put together. In fact, I still can't believe it now. Justin Bailey wasn't a person, a bathing suit, or anything at all. It was a random occurrence. In an interview with Mental Floss, Nintendo Power senior editor George Sinfield said, quote, The fact that Justin Bailey works as a password at all let alone one that features a powered up Samus, is pure coincidence and was not put into the game intentionally. He goes on to say that he wrote the classified information section back then and got tips and tricks from a lot of sources, including players who sent us letters. My guess is that someone named Justin Bailey wrote to Nintendo with the code after inputting his own name and getting interesting results. Now just how is that possible? The password for starting with the ice beam is this. And the password for getting the wave beam is this. So how do these random numbers and letters make some things appear, but an actual name makes everything appear? It's been found out that not all of the characters of each part of the password have any effect. Maybe to make it harder for kids to crack, I don't know. So passwords can be almost anything. It's just pure coincidence to us that Justin Bailey means anything. Other word combinations have been discovered, such as Continue My Game Mini Boss, which starts you in the beginning with an armorless Samus, and you can enter Torian from the start. There was one password, though, that was discovered recently, and that was actually hard-coded into the game. It gives you infinite energy and missiles and every power-up. Narpa's Sword. Or is it NAR password? NAR could mean North American release, not a real password, or part of the name of Toru Narihiro, who actually created the password system for the Western version of Metroid. Which if true, and I'm not saying it is, would actually be the programmer credit we all thought Justin Bailey was. While we're at it, the passwords for Kid Icarus are equally crazy, with passwords like Icarus fights Medusa Angels, and packing, 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 making the game much, 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 much easier. These two games share many elements, so it's likely the password system and its weirdness carried over. Anyway, the return of Samus and Super Metroid came and went, with battery backup. And over time, game saves became the norm, with long passwords dying out. Sure, they were fun to play around with, but a pain to put in. Time moved on and Justin Bailey faded away. Justin Bailey and Samus and a Leotard only exist in the Western version of Metroid. It doesn't exist in the Japanese version. Once you finish the game, you can't continue due to the save system. It has been included in fan-made mods of Super Metroid and Return of Samus, and those modders have helped Justin Bailey live on. For gamers of a certain age, it was a secret handshake that would tell others that you were in the know. Justin Bailey has popped up a few times since Metroid. The game Shadow Complex includes an achievement called Jason Bailey for completing the game with a 100% rating in under two hours. Its icon is a pair of tidy whities In the game Axiom Verge, Justin Bailey works as a password and will change the outfit of the character just like Samus in Metroid. The weirdest, most random out there reference of Justin Bailey that I could find is from the kids TV show Magical Do Re Mi where a student in the school is actually named Justin Bailey. Justin Bailey? 
Surely, when I was in school, if there were a real kid named Justin Bailey, he would have been loved by all. It's the coolest name, because it's a password in Metroid. So I wondered if there were actual people named Justin Bailey. After all, that was George Sinfield's theory as to how the code was found. It's not all. There is another Justin Bailey. Born in 1995, Justin Bailey is a foreword for the Buffalo Sabres. It's not known if his name was inspired by Metroid, but in what is possibly the ultimate video gaming full circle of crazy weirdness, he is playable in NHL 18. That game was released on September 15th, 2017, the same day as Samus Returns. Well, my mind is blown. I'm out of here. What do you think? Leave a comment about whenever you found Justin Bailey.